So the other day uh, we spoke briefly about the Atlantis tank and how it's just this amazing innovation and everything's changing and people start blowing big ass clouds on uh, on their Atlantis. And today um, I've got the privilege of trying out the newest, latest, and greatest item. And so here I have it. I'm not going to fuck with you anymore and talk more about bullshit. We've got the Kanger sub tank, and uh, this is going to be an unboxing video. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and dive right into it. I know you guys are anxious just like I am, so let's rip off that plastic, that cellophane. First thing, as soon as we get the cellophane off, you know, I noticed a couple of things. And you've got that classic Kinger tag on it, so you can verify all their products. You can go on their website and you know, punch in that number, and it'll let you know uh, if what you've bought is actually legitimate. Um, you can also register your, your Kinger products on their website as well. Um, for any kind of warranties that they offer. Nice solid boxing here. It looks like they put quite a bit of um, you know, effort into making sure that this was a nice solid box and that the packaging was, was appropriate. Um, it's got all of the specs on the back. It talks about the sub tank, everything it contains, um, you know, a few warnings and cautions and, and whatnot, and even some crap down here in Chinese or Japanese. And you slide the box out like so. It talks about the organic cotton coil, um, which they refer to as the OCC. It tells you how to pretty much you know use them wick the coils. It comes with this little pack this little packet here, little brochure I guess with all of the other pictures and diagrams and how to put everything together. But I'm a man, I don't use that shit. So right out of the box Nice little, you know, cut out for it and everything. It's almost like, you know, you used to watch the cartoons and friggin' Wile E. Coyote dives through the wall and it leaves that perfect imprint of his body. Same basic principle, I guess. That's kind of what they did here. And um, even down to the little detail for the tip, for the 510 pin, which apparently is spring-loaded, which is pretty awesome. No more floating your 510 connections on your mods and stuff. This thing should always make connection which that's just that's awesome in my personal opinion I've been waiting to see something like this um, there are probably there's probably going to be other mod or other RDAs and tanks and stuff out there that probably have this uh, but nothing that I've noticed as of yet um, just right out of the box the first thing I noticed is that the machine quality on this is absolutely top-notch I'd give it a 10 out of 10 like you would expect from any Kanger product um, no machine oil that I've noticed Everything looks really nice and clean. And at the top, you've got the etched Kanger Tech logo with a removable, a removable uh, drip tip, which is actually pretty nice as well. It's a pretty decent bore on it with the heat dissipating fins and everything like that. Let's put this off to the side and see what other goodies they gave us. All right, so there's quite a bit of stuff in here. Opening up the box, we get what's standard, you know, your little blue screwdriver. It looks like there's um, two already built coils for the RBA and two screws as well. And I'm pretty sure those are, those are Phillips head screws. And it also comes with organic Japanese cotton. All right, now in the box, we have what they refer to as a beauty ring, um, but my good friend Kurt calls it a beauty platform. And essentially it's because when you take a beauty ring, it usually sits flush over the top, or over the actual 510 connection. And it just makes it to where it fills that gap for you know any, any needs. But the thing is, this is a 25 millimeter tank. It's 25 millimeters in diameter, and most of our mods nowadays are 22 millimeters, obviously. So what we're trying to do with, I guess, what they're trying to do, Kanger Tech is trying to do with this, is uh, create this beauty ring to take it down to a 22 millimeter mod. And it sits right on top and gives you that 22 millimeter size. Pretty cool. So your guaranteed connection. I know a lot of people have problems with beauty rings from Kanger Tech. Um, creating an issue with connection on their 510, so I think that should eliminate that problem. Inside the tank, 
Um, it comes with a uh, already pre-built coil, um, which is um, 1.2 ohms. Suggested wattage on this from Kangertech is anywhere between 12 and 25 watts. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you throw this on your Segeli 100s, your IPVs, any of your regulated devices, if you go above 25 watts, um, you know, don't complain if it burns because Kangertech technically warned us. Um, I will take that apart. Let's take this apart. It's the first time I've taken this thing apart, so we're all going to learn together. Looks like it screws apart pretty normally like you would expect. Oh, there we are. And here's that coil. And just like the uh, Aspire Atlantis, it is a large son of a bitch. Oh, this is the sub ohm coil. This is the 0.5 ohm, and the suggested uh, wattage is anywhere between 15 and 30. And then on the tank, it looks like the glass just slides right off, which is pretty nice. I'm just trying to be careful here. That's a pretty cool option. You don't see that very often. Usually, the only thing holding all this together is going to be the glass tank. And uh, I'm not saying to go without the tank because that's obviously not an option, but it's nice to know that you're not relying on the tank for all of that pressure inside. Um, so this this is a very nice option. I like that they did this. It's um, strengthened Pyrex glass. So it's right into place there. I'm pretty sure that part. And it's got two Phillips head screws on top. And when you remove those, this top portion of the tank is removable and replaceable with this. And if you notice, the chimneys on here are different in size. This one's got a thicker diameter. Um, the point in that is whenever you take it from tank mode to RBA, where you build your own coil, um, it, it, uh, it's a different setup. It, it, this is, the whole design for this is that it's um, a tank for individuals who don't sub ohm and also a tank for individuals who do. The airflow is, is pretty unique. Um, you've got three different settings, or, well technically four, um, but the three, three open settings and one closed off setting. This setting here, as you can tell, are all three that are completely open, just wide open, and the airflow is probably going to be pretty good, and we'll, do, we'll talk about that whenever I actually get some juice in it, but that feels pretty wide open. That was actually pretty easy. I was making it harder than I thought. Um, I expected it to slide like the Atlantis or slide like anything else where it's got that resistance between the different settings. But there was actually no resistance. It clicks in and then just slides very easily once you get it to click out. So it clicks out and that right there is just a free turn. I mean there's absolutely very little resistance on that. And so you slide it over to the next option and as you can tell that is completely closed off. And you just click it out into the next one click and that is the center hole for a tighter air draw and there's the other one the other direction and that closes off that center hole but opens up the other two let's take it back over to wide open now inside the box we find this little guy and this is our RBA and if you take a good look at it, it, it says Kangertech RBA, it's got your little connection, and it's got its little chimney. And it almost looks just like a, a tiny RDA. However, I, I, I don't know if putting this on your actual mod and trying to vape off of this is a good idea or if it'll even work, but you know, that's, that's what it looks like. It looks like a little RDA. It's got removable pieces at the top of the chimney here. Those threads are nice and smooth. I'm not seeing any burrs, any issues, no machine oil. It's got a nice little gasket here for when your chimney clicks into place. And that nice conical design that you see on a lot of the newer RDAs for flavor. This conical design, is the, the idea behind that is, I guess, to get a better flavor quality. So I'm expecting to have something pretty good out of this. 
And there they've already got two built coils put in place for you uh, that come out to 0.5 off as well. Also pretty smooth. Got that bottom feed airflow like you expect to see on a, on a rebuildable tank. Flow, airflow comes in through the bottom right here at the 510 connection and up into the chimney underneath the coils. Pretty much a K, it's pre, pretty much a K-fun setup. I mean, the way the R, the uh, RBA sits, you've got you know you obviously want to wick it and then set your wicks down here on the side of these channels and then the juice will flow up through there. Pretty pretty basic setup. Pretty much what you expect from a K-fun or something of that nature. And that other piece that I was talking about replaces the in the tank, and I believe it would sit just like so with the tank around it. And we'll put that together here in a minute, and we'll put some juice in this thing, and we'll see how she vapes. All right, so I've thrown the uh, the tank the way it came out of the box with the 0.5 coil uh, uh, coil head on there. And the coil head and the, the everything, like the coil head says 0.5 ohms on the side of the coil head. The um, little packet that we got tells us that it's a 0.5 ohm coil head. But when I throw it on the IPV, it reads out to 1 ohm. But we're going to see how it babes here in a little bit. But I'm actually going to show you guys how we're going to take this thing apart. It comes with two of these little set screws in the top here. And the little blue screwdriver works perfectly. You just take those out and then this top piece comes right off. No screwing necessary. It just pulls right out. And then from that point you remove the bottom or you can remove the bottom first. It's personal preference. take your point, point 0.5 ohm coil out and put in your RBA. Before we do that, let's wick it. Tell you what, let's go ahead and throw this thing on the IPV and find out what it comes out to. One ohm. I don't know if you guys can see that, if the glare is there, but one ohm is what it says. So not quite a sub ohming. It is called the sub tank, and so far no, I've seen nothing that says indicates sub ohm, but we will see. Let's build it. All right. Now, if you're familiar with the K-Fun, you're familiar with a fogger, anything that has this kind of a, a deck to build on, you want to make sure that your cotton is not coming down over the side here. You want to cut off enough to where it sits right there on the base on the and it comes up through that channel to wick your cotton for you. And I will show you what I'm talking about. So we're going to cut off just a little bit. It might end up cutting off a little more. We're going to see. That seems to be perfect. So now, 
You take your favorite juice. I'm vaping on that Bangarang from Smoky Mountain Vapes. Yes, I named it. And you just get your wicks nice and juicy. Juicy. That reminds me. I saw a chick walking down the street the other, the other day. And uh, did you know those, those shorts that people wear that say juicy on them? Those are still in style. Really? I was still wearing that stupid shit. Damn. I thought that died out back in like 2005. Yeah. Well, tell, I'll tell you this. She didn't have the ass for it. They rarely do. So you juice it up. And you tuck it down and make it stick. And that's really it. That's what it takes. Those wicks might be a tad bit short, but I think they'll do just fine. Now when you put your chimney back on, the juice comes down from the tank, it comes into these little indentions, these are the channels, and it flows up into the wick and absorbs is absorbed by the wick. And then you burn it off on the coil. Just like so. Now it's better. Now that I've actually fired it, and I don't know if you can see it or not, um, but it's come down to 0.4 ohms. On, you want to get it down there nice and snug, hand tight. Don't take a pair of channel locks or a wrench and tighten that thing down. I'm sure if you've been vaping long enough, you should know this already, but I have to reiterate because some people just make stupid mistakes. Now, let's fill this sucker up a little bit, get some, some juice on it. And we're going to talk a little bit about these channels as well. The tiny hole, you probably can't see it. Tiny, tiny little hole right there. No, you can't see it on the camera at all. Okay, there's a tiny little hole there where the juice flows from the tank and into that little channel to wick um, your coils. Um, not 100% sure how effective this is going to be because those holes are very very small so we might run into problems with that just being honest so let's put that top cap back on for the chimney slide our glass on Just hand tight until it stops and starts giving you some resistance. And now let's put some juice in it. That should be enough for this video purpose. The tank with the RBA tip holds 4.2 milliliters of juice. That's not that bad. With the dual coil 0.5 ohm, 0.5 ohm co coil head that it comes with, it'll hold up to six milliliters of juice. Now, we found out that after firing it the first time on the IPV, that the ohms actually did drop down to sub ohm at 0.4. So I'm expecting the same thing will most likely happen with this. So even though it says 0.5, and I told you it's most likely 0.1, because that's what it was reading, after you fire it the first time on your regulated device, it will probably register the way it's supposed to. Technically, this is supposed to be 0.5, and it came out to 0.4. So that's good and bad. So now we take the appropriate piece. slide our glass on Thank you. just hand tight until it stops and starts giving you some resistance and now let's put some juice in it That should be enough for this video purpose. The tank with the RBA tip holds 4, 4.2 milliliters of juice. 
It's not that bad. With the dual coil 0.5 ohm, 0.5 ohm co coil head that it comes with, it'll hold up to six milliliters of juice. Now, we found out that after firing it the first time on the IPV that the ohms actually did drop down to sub ohm at 0.4. So I'm expecting the same thing will most likely happen with this. So even though it says 0.5 and I told you it's most likely 0.1 because that's what it was reading, after you fire it the first time on your regulated device, it will probably register the way it's supposed to. Technically, this is supposed to be 0.5 and it came out to 0.4. So that's good and bad. So now we take the appropriate piece. The difference is this one is for your RBA, shorter chimney. This one's for your tank, a lot, of, a lot longer. This one's for the pre-built coil head. This is for the one that you can build yourself. So we'll put that one away. This goes right on top and slides right in and just push it down. And then you just have to line up your holes on top like so, you line those holes up, you take these little screws and be careful not to drop them down in there. I think the best idea would probably be to put the drip tip back on so I don't drop them down the chimney hole. Just put your drip tip on there, put your little screw in, and tighten that little fucker down. We're almost there, folks. I'm going to be vaping on this thing soon. I'm getting all antsy in the pantsy. All right. So, again, 0.4 ohms, 27.8 watts at 3.6 volts. Let's take that up a little bit. Let's take it up to 30 watts. No, screw that. Fuck that. We're going to start out low. I don't want to burn this thing up right at the beginning. So we're going to start out low at 25 watts. 25 watts, 3.5 volts, 0.4 ohms. So let's, I'm going to do a couple of quick drags just to get some juice flowing and stuff like that before I actually vape it. Already, I can taste, my, I can taste the juice. And it's exceptional quality and that's without vapor. So uh, I've got some pretty high hopes at this point. And let's fire away. No, it's it's great. That is really, really good flavor. I am exceptionally pleased at the flavor. Uh, the Atlantis, I called it a if I, if I recall, I called it like an 8 out of 10 for flavor. This is a 9. I call this a, an 8.5 to a 9 easily. I'm not going to call it a 10 out of 10 just because I'm very Jewish when it comes to those kinds of things. I don't like to call anything a 10. Nothing is really a 10. If it's a 10, I'm going to own many, many, many of them. So I'm going to call this an 8.5 to a 9. There is room for improvement, but it, it's not bad at all. The weight. Let's talk about that for a second because the weight of this tank, I mean this thing is, compared to the you know, Atlantis, is obviously much larger. 25 millimeter atomizer, 56 millimeters tall, and it weighs 94 grams. That's, that's some weight. And if you could imagine putting this thing on a Manhattan, a copper Manhattan, I mean you're going to have one heavy son of a bitch. It's going to double as a weapon. So keep that in mind guys if you're not looking for something super heavy this might not be for you because this thing has quite this this IPV is top heavy as, as balls right now this thing is really really heavy and that's wide open so let's take it down a notch turn that airflow to the second highest setting, which is the center one is closed and the two other ones are open. And we're going to give that a shot. 25 watts. A much tighter draw. There is a huge difference there. The airflow is not as 
wide open as the Atlantis. It's good on its widest, on its most open setting, it's good. It's not as open as the Atlantis. If you like a lot of air, air draw, a lot of air flow, I suggest you might want to consider sticking with the Atlantis. Uh, the flavor quality on this is a tad bit better, um, but the airflow just it just blows it out of the water. Yeah, absolutely. The airflow on the Atlantis is so much better. It's so much. Let's go back to wide open. So back to wide open. Yep. Airflow on the Atlantis is so much better. This is kind of restrictive. Even at its most open setting, this is, this is pretty restrictive. So let's take it all the way down to its lowest setting other than close. And you guys might be, want, want to be careful when you're doing this. Unlike the Atlantis, that airflow ring is kind of tight trying to get it out of that original spot. Once you get it to click out, um, it, it flows pretty freely. But it's trying to get it initially to move is the hardest part. So you might want to hold the base as you twist. And I mean, I'm, I'm putting quite a bit of finger strength into this. And I keep moving the whole damn tank. There you go. But once it's clicked in, it's not moving. That's for sure. So that is the lowest setting. That is as closed off as it's going to get other than completely closed. That's so tight that I can't even do a lung inhale. That's that's mouth to lung all day long. It is a lot warmer than the Atlantis, um, and I contribute that to the fact that it's 0.4 ohms versus 0.6, and it's also um, you know a tighter air draw, even at its most open setting. So let's take this thing back all the way over to wide open. And let's bump it up. We're going to go to, that's the other direction. I was wondering why the numbers were going down. Let's take it up to 30. 30 watts puts us at 3.7 volts and 0.4 ohms. So essentially, like I said before, this is the same as doing it on uh, one of your mechanical mods. The, you know, before, that was what you can expect probably after, you know, voltage drop. This is going to be 3.7 direct as if you were having no voltage drop off of your EFEST or Sony VTC5 or whatever battery you're using. Um, obviously, I recommend using a Samsung 25R, um, EFEST, MXJO, MRIN, or um, I think that's it. Did I mention the Sony VTC5? Those are hard to come by, but I, I recommend anything that I just mentioned. Those are the best batteries to use. So 30 watts. Let's see how it does. Flavor quality drops a little bit. I'm not going to say a whole lot, but I'm going to take it down to um, 8 to 8.5. It's no longer in that, that status, and it's not a huge difference, but it's enough to know that the flavor quality is not as good. Uh, vapor production, it seems to be about the same. Look any bigger to you? <laughs> it's about the same. Um, warmth is still the same. Everything's pretty much the same except for you bringing that flavor quality down. I think that if this thing had more airflow, um, we would see a lot better results. All in all, price point for this thing, is um, roughly between $65 and $75 um, is what I found. Here at Smoky Mountain Vapes in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, you can pick it up for $59.99, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, $59.99. Airflow, like I said, oh, if the airflow, if they could adjust this and, and make the airflow better and give you more airflow, uh, even somewhere close to the equivalent of the Atlantis, because this thing doesn't hold a light in comparison to, in comparison to the Atlantis. Uh, if we could get that uh, out of this, this would be a much better product. But for $59.99 over here at Smoky Mountain Vapes, I'd say it's a, uh, it's a good product. I would pay $59.99 for this, just because the fact that, one, it looks it looks bangering. This thing is sick. Uh, I love the way it looks. The weight is incredible. Um, I love big bulky. Uh, <laughs> I love big bulky atomizers. RDAs, RBAs, RTAs, RDTAs. If the bigger, the better. I love them like that. The uh, the Atlantis is a decent size, um, but it doesn't hold a light compared to this. 
Um, however, when we come to um, price point versus overall quality, I kind of have to go with the Atlantis. I think the Atlantis is winning this one, Kanger. Um, quality of product is better, but not better enough for the price to be that much higher. Um, airflow is my biggest complaint. Airflow is, is something that you know you just you've got to work on. Kanger, if you're listening, if you're watching this, uh, fix this. More airflow, and you will have the better product. But as of right now, the uh, Atlantis is getting my vote. Uh, let's take it up to 50 watts real quick and just see what it does. And over here at Smoky Mountain Vapes, I'd say it's a uh, it's a good product. I would pay 59.99 for this just because the fact that one, it looks it looks bangerang. This thing is sick. Uh, I love the way it looks. The weight is incredible. Um, I love big, bulky, bastardized fucking dicks. Yeah, <laughs> bastard. <laughs> we'll have to edit that out. Uh, <laughs> I love big, bulky atomizers. RDAs, RBAs, RTAs, RDTAs. If they're the bigger, the better. I love them like that. Yeah, this is happening. The uh, the Atlantis is a decent size, um, but it doesn't hold a light compared to this. Um, however, when we come to um, price point versus overall quality, I kind of have to go with the Atlantis. I think the Atlantis is winning this one, Kanger. Um, quality of product is better, but not better enough for the price to be that much higher. Um, airflow is my biggest complaint. Airflow is, is something that you know you just you've got to work on. Kanger, if you're listening, if you're watching this, uh, fix this. More airflow, and you will have the better product. But as of right now, the uh, Atlantis is getting my vote. Uh, let's take it up to 50 watts real quick and just see what it does. I hope I don't burn this thing up. I'll be very upset if I burn it up at 50 watts. I wouldn't think it would. Well, the Atlantis can handle it. So, 50 watts on a RBA coil at 0.4 ohms. That comes out to 4.8 volts. That's not that bad. It's firing. It sounds hot. It's hot. That is a nice hot vape. Flavor. Flavor didn't change much. Flavor is about the same as it was at, at, thir at 30 watts. So uh, I don't think that taking up to 50 watts is a big deal. And I, I think maybe on this pre-built uh, coil head, you might have an issue with that. Um, but we're not really gonna we're not gonna really vape on that because I think the biggest thing that people want is this rebuildable RBA style um, atomizer. They want a tank that can hold a lot and that's gonna give them the, the airflow that they want. Like I said, good quality product. Um, it's gonna be in my top 10. Not my top five, not my top three. Um, the Atlantis is up there in the top five. I'd say out of all of them, this is probably my seventh favorite out of everything I've tried. Um, not much else to say, guys. Interchangeable drip tip, gold-plated 510 connection with spring-loaded. That's really cool. I think that's a very innovative idea. I think Kanger's got something really good going on here. I just think they need to protect, per perfect this idea. So... Um, the sub tank version 2.0, maybe we'll have a win on that one.